Hello everyone, we are back and we are going to get into our lecture five, hypothesis testing and p-values. So we left off last time in lecture four where we now we know how to do confidence intervals for small sample sizes, large sample sizes, and everything in between. Um, but one of the things that we haven't really touched on yet is doing hypothesis testing, asking questions about our data set. Um, so for example, um, when we we'll typically ask, is this, does the sample come from a population with a mean of this? Does it come from a population with a mean greater than? Are these two stamp samples distinctly different? So that's kind of the key thing that we're going to be doing here, and we're going to be developing this hypothesis testing protocol. So let's take let's check it out. Null hypothesis. That's the first step in our hypothesis testing. So you define what this null hypothesis is. We define typically it's mu is a specific value. Second step. Alternative hypothesis. We're going to have three different types of tests. A two-tail test, a left-tail test, and a right-tail test. So those are the types of tests um, that we'll most commonly encounter. So two-tail test is, does it come from a population with a mean of a single value? Does it come from a population with a mean less than? Does it come from a population with a mean greater than? So that's typically what we're going to see here. So when it's a two-tail test, our alternative hypothesis is it's not that value. If it's left-tailed, it's less than. If it's right-tailed, it's greater than. And there's a lot of nuances to this. Um, so we're going to get started here. Um, so this is our hypothesis testing procedure. So first thing we do, define our null hypothesis. Second, what is our alternative hypothesis? Third, what is our confidence interval for this? Four, calculate our T or Z experimental value from our data set. Five, determine the proper value of T alpha over nu or T alpha over two nu using our degrees of freedom, which is equal to N minus one. If it falls in the H naught region, we reject H naught and we accept the alternative hypothesis. If it, if T experimental, I call this T experimental because it's what we kind of calculate from our experiment. It falls in the do not reject region. We conclude that we do not have sufficient data to reject H naught at the level of um, specified confidence. I'm fine if you just leave it as do not reject or reject H naught, as long as we kind of um, do our due diligence. So let's, let's start off with an example. Um, does the PCM data come from a po population with a true mean of two milligrams, assuming a 95% confidence interval. So first step, define our null hypothesis. Mu comes from a population, or it comes from a population with a mu of two, milligram two milligrams. Alternative, it does not. Third step, we are working at a 95% confidence interval. This is a two-sided test. So basically we're looking at an alpha over two equal to 0 0.025. So you can kind of add that in there. Three, we need to calculate our experimental, our T experimental. So let's first do it as we kind of see here. And actually I'm going to go ahead and let's get into files. I'm gonna basically try to move this over a little bit, but um, let's go ahead and just install our typical or library. Let's do uh, tidyverse. I'm going to do library ggplot2 and hopefully library rstatics. Let's see. Hopefully we don't have to. Well, let's see. Let's see if we can just get it right with this. I think we should. So boom, boom. And then now let's go ahead and let's import our data set, our PCM. So we're looking for our PCM measurements. So actually, let's go ahead. Uh, do we have the PCM? Ah, oh, we do have PCM. So we're going to read in library. Read Excel. Because now we're going to do set as working directory right here. And then we're going to read in, uh, let's see, PCM dat goes to read underscore xlsx pcm dot xlsx pcm dat so we can look at this we can do the mean of pcm dat 
Uh, it doesn't like that because I think we need to bring in bring in this out. And I think this looks okay because if you look at our PCM dat, it's yeah we need to we need to pull out that first column there. So this looks good. We can look at SD SD of PCM dat brick brick one. So we can look at that value here. I don't know where that real. Let's get just delete that. Um, so we can go ahead and calculate our t value. And actually, let's do let's go ahead and um, t val or t experimental. Let's do function, and it's a function of. Let's look at our notes. It's a function of x bar mu naught. So x bar mu naught. And I think we have to do that. X bar mu naught. What else? Let's look at here. Eh. Excuse me. Sx and root end. Or Sx and n. So x bar minus mu naught divided by Sx divided by square root of n. So I think that should work. Control enter. So now let's look at t experimental of, let's do x bar will be this. Our mu naught was two. Our sx, pcm dat, bracket bracket one. And then our n will just be this, but the length. And we see our t-experimental is 0.9999, which is good. Excellent. Now, fantastic. We built that functionality in. Um, so that's our t-experimental. So now I could look in the value or in the table, what's our t-alpha new? Now, what is the length of our data set? That's a good question. What's length of PCM that prick prick on? It's 18, so our new is going to be 17. So our value, because it's two-sided, we take its 95% confidence. That means our alpha equals 0 0.05, but it's alpha over 2, so it's 0 0.025. So that is going to leave us with a value of 17. So we go over here, 025, 17, 2.11. There we go. Right there. So we can go back over here, 2.11. So looking at our figure, if our bounds are plus or minus 2.11, so this is 2.11, and this is minus 2.11, where does 0.99 fall? In the do not reject H naught regime. Excellent. Now, what if we did this thing we did last time in R, which is a little bit more efficient, t-test, where is it? It's not, uh, we may have to read in t-test. Yeah, we're gonna have to read this in. So we need to install.packages Stats. Oh, and that's the read in library. Stats. So let's do t test. Hopefully it's there now. T dot test. So you can see what we're going to do here for t test. And let's do pcm dot one. And we can see some of the values that we have to do here. Now, what we want to do is we want to actually define some other things. So let's do, we are going to do t-test, but let's specify. I want to specify a confidence conf level of 0.95. I want to um, alternative, even though it's not alternative, I'm going to say um, two-sided. Um, and we're not paired and then very, all right, here we go. So we can get this here. So we can kind of double check um, 
certain things here. So we are saying, and actually, uh, true mean, actually we have to say, we have to specify the mu. So we should also specify that the mu equals 2.0. So we can see our T value, 0.99, excellent. So same value here as we calculated previously, and actually I think it's exactly the same, or pretty much so. What we were, what we we're looking for. Where's our value? 0.9, it's a, it's a little bit different. Again, it's, this, it's effectively the same value here. So this looks good. Um, we're saying true mean is not equal. That's our alternative hypothesis. Um, so you can kind of double check that that's true. Um, so we're, get, we're getting the same as effectively confidence interval values. Um, but where's our result? Well, you see this thing called the p-value? The p-value is our indicator. Now, a p-value is something that is said a lot, but we never really explain what it is. Um, and simply, it's the probability of getting a result that is more extreme than the value that's actually observed. Now, again, let, let's put that in context. Um, p-value, effectively, is giving us probability of measuring a value greater than observed. It's the tail end. So the way that you can interpret the p-value is if, if we're running a two-tailed test, so at a 5% confidence interval, if our p-value is greater than 0 0.025, then we're going to fall in the do not reject regime. Why is that? Because our p-value is effectively giving us this these extreme areas. So if we're greater than that, we need to have areas that extend beyond this. Because remember, this is the magic number where it's, this is the t-value where I'm going to create, I'm going to have 95% of my data um, basically in between, or basically in between these bounds, right? That was our confidence interval. That was what we were looking at here. So the t-value corresponded essentially to your alpha of your confidence interval. p-value is essentially the same thing here. It's looking at these areas. So if it's greater than that, it means that really the actual experimental one is falling in here. So it's essentially telling you the same thing. So if I'm working at a 0.025 confidence interval, then if my p-value is greater than that, it's the do not reject regime. And what does our p-value state? Well, our p-value here is telling us 0.336. Nope, we are in the do not reject regime for sure. So we've got it, fantastic. Let's do another example. 